as a first time drone owner or even someone who's been flying drones for a while, there are a few simple things you can overlook that can jeopardize your drone. This might be as simple as not knowing the difference between the two return to home modes, not getting a GPS lock, or not knowing the drone's limits. There are also things that can ruin the videos you get with your drone, such as resolution changes when moving between modes. Well, this video should save you from having to make them mistakes the hard way. Here are the 12 biggest mistakes new pilots make with the Mavic 3 Classic. Let's get started with mistake number one. And a big mistake you can make as a beginner that really genuinely could result in a crash of your drone is not realizing that obstacle avoidance turns off whenever you're flying in sport mode. So even though you have your safety settings set to brake or bypass mode whenever the drone encounters an obstacle, this becomes unavailable in sport mode. You can see this happen if you're in the settings menu, whenever you switch into sport mode, you can see that brake mode turns off or obstacle avoidance turns off. So just be extra cautious whenever you're flying in sport mode. And if you want that obstacle avoidance, fly in either normal or semi mode. Another thing that can jeopardize your drone is not understanding the braking distance of the drone. The Mavic 3 Classic can fly very fast, especially in sport mode. And if you're flying at full speed and you come to a stop, there is a distance it takes before it can come to a complete stop and hover in place. So if you're hurtling towards an obstacle, don't think that you can just stop flying forward right at the last minute and the drone will instantly come to a hover. And so you want to make sure that you're starting to slow the drone down or bring it to a stop with enough distance before it reaches whatever it is you are going to film. The next mistake you can make is ignoring firmware updates. Firstly, you want firmware updates because it brings with it the latest safety features and latest updates to your drone. For example, the latest firmware update to the Mavic 3 brought with it cruise control and night mode, exciting new features which are really useful. If the firmware is really outdated, you might get out to the location with your brand new drone, go to take it off and realize it actually needs a firmware update. And then because you're somewhere, well like this, where there's literally no internet, then you won't be able to do them firmware updates and you might have to go home, do the firmware updates and then come all the way back. And here's something that catches lots of people out. Some firmware updates actually apply updates to the batteries themselves. So whenever you're doing a firmware update, it will update whatever battery you have in the drone at that time. Then you might get out to location and after you've used up that battery, you'll put another battery in and realize that that firmware update also needs applied to that battery. So whenever you're doing firmware updates, make sure after the first battery has updated, that you put each subsequent battery into it that you own if you have a fly more kit and make sure the updates are applied to them batteries as well. Now with the Mavic 3 Classic, the propellers are quick release. So what that means is whenever you're putting them on the drone, you press them in and you twist them in place to lock them in. So what you want to do before every launch, and I do this before every launch, and you'll actually get a prompt in the DJI Fly app before you take off to make sure you do this, is to just check the propellers are locked in place. It takes a few seconds to check each propeller before you take off. Just give it a quick visual check to make sure that it's locked in place. Maybe push it in and twist it to make sure it's fully tightened. And then you won't have any doubts about the propellers being securely in place when you're flying around. Before we take a look at the next beginner mistake new drone pilots make with the Mavic 3 Classic, I just want to thank today's video sponsor, which is Wirestock. Wirestock is a tool that helps you take the clips you capture with the DJI Mavic 3 Classic or any drone and easily sell them as stock to potentially make a little bit of side income. It's as simple as uploading the drone clips you capture to their website and they distribute it to all the major stock marketplaces. To make things even easier, you can use Easy Submission and they will go through and add all the metadata to each clip for you. This is great because it means you can focus on getting the best clips possible, edit them, upload them, and let Wirestock handle the rest. The best thing about Wirestock is that you don't need multiple accounts on all the stock marketplace websites. You only have one account and one dashboard to track everything, including how many downloads you have had, and more importantly, the earnings for each clip. Wirestock also automatically creates a portfolio page for you, and you can use this to sell your stock directly to potential buyers by sending them the link. So if you want to try selling your drone footage as stock to make a little bit of side income, then head to the link in the description where you can get started with Wirestock right now. Now, if you're a beginner and you come out to location, you might be eager to take off immediately and start playing with the new features and settings. But what you want to make sure before you take off is that you get a GPS lock. The GPS is used for return to home, which is a super important safety feature on this drone. If you lose signal, 
if you get disorientated and need to bring the drone back to you, or if you need to press and hold that return to home button, return to home uses GPS to bring the drone back to you. So if you don't have a GPS lock, then features won't be available to you. So make sure that you get a GPS lock before you take off. Now, the way you know that you've got a GPS lock is firstly the little satellite icon on the top right of the screen. It will change from red to orange and then white. And once it's white, you know you have enough satellites connected and you have a GPS lock. You will also hear an audible sound say home point update it. And what that means is you've just got a GPS lock and the drone has updated its home point to where the drone is so it knows to come back to this location if anything goes wrong. Now, speaking of return to home, the DJI Mavic 3 Classic actually has two return to home modes, and you want to be aware of which one is set. So you have the traditional return to home where you set a return to home height, and always make sure that that return to home height is higher than any of the obstacles in the area around you. And then if you engage return to home or you lose signal and return to home engages automatically, the drone will rise up to that predetermined height, fly back to the home point and land. But the Mavic 3 Classic also has an advanced return to home mode. And in this mode, it might not rise up and it will actually fly an optimal route back to while bypassing obstacles. So why do you need to be aware of which one you have set? Well, let's say for example, you're in a forest with lots of trees and lots of tree coverage. Advanced return to home is gonna be a much better option because if you use traditional return to home, whenever the drone loses signal, it might rise up and then it's gonna rise up to where all them trees are and might not be able to get out into the open and fly back to you. Or if it does fly back to you, it might not be able to come down to you because there is again trees overhead. Advanced return to home is gonna be better in that scenario because it will be able to fly back to you while avoiding the obstacles. So hands up if this has ever happened to you. You've been out with your drone, you've been recording in 4K or 5.1K and you think, I'm gonna use an automated mode such as quick shots. You change into that mode, you get an epic clip, but then when you come home and look at it, you think that looks really blurry. The resolution looks really bad. So you check the resolution and it's recorded in 1080p. Yep, I've been caught out with that as well. So whenever you change between video mode and automated modes, the resolution isn't carried across. So if you've never set your quick shots mode or your master shots mode to 4K before, it will default to 1080p. So always make sure that whenever you change from video mode to that automated mode, that you check the resolution because just because you were recording in 4K or 5.1K in video mode does not mean that will automatically translate over to them automated modes unless you adjust it manually. The other beginner mistake that can jeopardize your drone is putting too much faith in obstacle avoidance. The obstacle avoidance of the DJI Mavic 3 Classic, in my opinion, is really, really good, but it's not perfect and it will not stop the drone 100% of the time. There are scenarios where it can just get caught out because it doesn't see the obstacle. I find that really fine twigs or fine branches in forests, for example, can catch out and also power lines can catch out. And power lines are really hard to see on the screen when you're flying. So you can end up in a scenario where you don't see the power line and the drone doesn't see the power line and this obviously can jeopardize your drone. So a low obstacle avoidance is a fantastic tool that will make flying your drone so much safer, especially as a beginner, you need to make sure that you're also being aware of your surroundings and any obstacles in it. If you do turn your obstacle avoidance off, let's say for example, you want to get a shot where you're flying close to something, always make sure that you remember the second you're done recording to turn it back on. And the last thing with obstacle avoidance is remember the braking distance off the drone. Just because the drone stops itself when it sees an obstacle doesn't mean that you might be already traveling too fast and it might not be able to stop itself in time. So again, remember the braking distance of the drone. So something that might result in you getting lots of video footage that you might not be able to use is using the wrong color profile as a beginner. So with the Mavic 3 Classic, the normal color profile provides saturated and colorful and beautiful looking video that you can use out your drone straight away. But you might have heard that D-Log or HLG mode is better at preserving highlights and shadows and colors, but it requires that you color grade the video in post to get it to that stage. Whenever you look at it straight out of the drone, it will look gray and desaturated. So as a beginner, I highly recommend if you don't know how to color grade, that you make sure you're using the normal color profile. Actually, I think the normal color profile out of the Mavic 3 Pro looks fantastic anyway, and it's the one I use most of the time. Now, if you're a beginner, you might accidentally end up in D-Log mode and not realize it because there's a setting on the Mavic 3 Classic called D-Log Color Assist. 
And what this means is it will quickly apply a color grade. It will add saturation to the preview of the video on your controller, even though you're in that gray and desaturated D-Log mode. But the thing here is, this is only added to the preview you're seeing on your controller and not to the clips the drone is recording. So if you're in this mode, everything may look okay on the screen, then you'll get home. And when you look at the video files that are on your micro SD card, they will be gray and desaturated. So always make sure you know what color profile you're in. And as I say, if you're a beginner and don't know how to color grade, I recommend you stick with the normal color profile. Something I also recommend you do is every time you take your drone off, make sure you know which mode you are in. Now, the reason I say this is because whenever you turn your drone on for the first time, it will always default to the normal mode. Even though you might have your controller set to Cine or Sport, the drone will always default to normal mode until you adjust that setting on the controller for the first time. So you might think that you're in Cine mode because the controller sets that mode, take the drone off, you might be close to an obstacle and you might go to fly and think I'm okay even though I'm close to that obstacle because the drone will take off or it will fly quite slowly because it's in Cine mode, but not realize it's in normal mode and you might fly into something. So always double check that the top left of the screen on the controller, the flight mode matches the flight mode the controller set to. And if it doesn't, just change it and change it back. And that will make sure that the controller flight mode matches up to your drone's flight mode. Something I recommend you do as a new drone owner is quickly take a look at the spec sheet so you know the drone's limitations. The Mavic 3 Classic is a powerhouse, but you may be mistaken in thinking it can handle any kind of wind condition, any kind of temperature. And the reality is every drone has its limits. So something I recommend you check is things like the operating temperature, the max wind speed. Like I say, the Mavic 3 Classic can handle really high winds, but you need to know at what point it's gonna to start to struggle so you don't accidentally fly it off in a tailwind out over the water. And then when you turn the drone around to bring it back to you, you might struggle to bring it back to you because you're now flying in a headwind. Be aware of the fact that the wind speed is usually higher in the air than it is down in the ground. So just because it feels relatively okay where you're standing doesn't mean it's much windier up there where you're taking your drone off into. And also remember that the drone is not waterproof, so don't be flying it when it's raining. So the last mistake you can make as a beginner is not knowing that you have the emergency brake button available on your controller to use at any time. When you press this button, the drone will come to an immediate stop and hover in place. So this can be useful if you're using that new cruise control mode, it's flying automatically based on the motion you set, but all of a sudden you don't like the way it's heading. Maybe you're doing a quick shot, you're doing a circle move and you see your drone and you don't like that it's heading towards an obstacle. Or maybe you're flying and as a beginner, you're concentrating on your drone and someone comes over to talk to you and you start to get distracted. You can simply press that emergency brake button and the drone will stop whatever it's doing even if it's doing an automated flight mode and hover in place until you're happy to take back control off it and continue flying it. So hopefully now you know what to avoid as a beginner to make sure you don't put your new drone at risk and also don't end up with a video that didn't turn out how you were expecting it to. Are there any mistakes I've missed or any mistakes you've made recently? Then why not drop it in the comments down below? Now, if you like this video and you've learned something new, please let me know by giving me the thumbs up and clicking that like button down below. And if you love all things drones and want to know how to get more cinematic videos and better photos with your drone, then why not check out my channel where I have a ton of other content to help you level up your drone game. Make sure to click subscribe and make sure that notification bell is on so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. If you want to stick around and see a few more of them now, here's a few I personally recommend. I'll not keep you back any further. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you over there.